<coughs> QFD. I say, some are familiar. QFD is not like most things, most tools and that. In itself, is not very clever. But behind it is often decades of experimentation and practice and evidence about what works and what doesn't. So often the best techniques, whether you're talking about forecasting or project management or quality management, are the simple ones that you can learn quite quickly, but you have to apply them. That sounds really daft, doesn't it? But if you don't apply a method or tool, it's not going to have any utility. And I've seen lots of people learn quality management. I've done quality management. I've done profit, uh, project management. And they've done it. It's a qualification. And then they go off and develop a product on intuition or skill or talking to a customer and completely ignore it. Yeah? So the trick of any method is to say, well, apply it. So what does it try to do? QFD, quality function deployment, tries to create a common language, a common platform where marketing, strategy, operations, sometimes even finance, suppliers, sometimes even customers, can rally around, often graphically, so they can do it in groups rather than individually, yeah? rather than a PowerPoint pack being presented to you as a fait accompli. It's an interactive tool that people can debate, argue. They have to make explicit what their assumptions are. That's more important than that. And then somebody can argue with them. That's not the case. Why don't we think that's the case? Here's some evidence. How could we could do that and that? So it's, if you like, a common platform to allow different functional groups, sometimes suppliers, unfortunately hardly ever customers, to interact in a framework which none of them own. Yeah? In the sense it's not their framework. So QFD tries to get multifunctional groups together with a view to identifying what is important to this market segment, tangible and intangible. Okay? And then trying to, in some way, uh, prioritise or rationalise or rank or at least identify what's more important than other things and then figure out, plural, how we might achieve some of these things. And that's why you need some techies there to say, well, that's not possible, which is what they always say. Yeah? And you say, well, why isn't it possible? Because if you do that, you can't do that. And then somebody else can come up and say, well, actually, somebody else has already done that. Let's go talk to them. Okay? So often it brings to the surface what your assumptions are, what the trade-offs are, what some of the potential design conflicts are, which sometimes you can overcome with a bit of debate, a bit of searching. Okay, so it's a simple technique. It has its limitations, which we'll end with, yeah, but it's an incredibly powerful technique. It can be used for process and for product development. But today we're just going to apply it to the case study of Toyota, which a while back figured out that Kaizen was reaching diminishing returns. Subsequently it's gone quite horribly wrong in terms of quality as a result of that, but nonetheless it spurned up firstly an entrance, a very successful entrance to the luxury car market, and secondly, a few years later, creation of the hybrid car market. Okay, so it yields results, very profitable, very high margin results. And to contrast that with their competitors, because I know you like to do that, look at what, I won't mention Fiat again, it sounds um, unpleasant to keep talking about Fiat, look at what Peugeot Citroen tried, look at what General Motors tried, look at what Chrysler tried. They all tried and failed to enter the luxury car market. It's tough. It's different. The attributes are different. The customers are different. The externalities of wraparounds are different. And it doesn't translate very well. So the power of QFD is to make those assumptions explicit so people can debate and challenge and come up with something that might actually work. Yeah? Rather than just a marketing idea or just a techie's idea. So I'll ask you for maybe half an hour maximum just to sort of congregate in areas here, I'm going to lock both doors. No, I'm not going to lock both doors. Um, just for sort of 20 minutes, half an hour, and then we're, we'll reconvene and discuss, firstly, in specific to the case, what that might yield, and then more generically what it can and what it can't do, what the lessons that we take away. Is that clear? Yeah? Great. Okay. Go. <laughs> okay, groups.